published in January 2013 by Marianne Hopkins et al. It's titled, De Novo Genetic Variation Revealed in Somatic Sectors of Single Arabidopsis Plants. Using presence-absence molecular markers, we demonstrate that single Arabidopsis plants can have multiple genotypes. Sequence analysis reveals single nucleotide changes, loss of sequences, and surprisingly, acquisition of unique genomic insertions. Estimates based on quantitative analysis suggest that these genetically discordant sectors are very small but can have a complex genetic makeup. In ruling out more trivial explanations for these data, our findings raise the possibility that intrinsic drivers of genetic variation are responsible for the targeted sequence changes we detect. By employing classical genetic approaches in conjunction with low and high resolution molecular methods, we show that one Arabidopsis plant can have multiple genotypes. We have found instances of intra-organismal variation in different genetic backgrounds in plants reared in different growth chambers at different developmental stages and under sterile growth conditions. To the best of our knowledge, this is the first report that documents the spontaneous but targeted appearance of unique genomic insertions at multiple discrete loci in single plants. In both cases, the insertion was non-random and targeted a specific locus. A uh, locus is just a, a region of the genome. Our data suggests that the reported cases of spontaneous genomic insertion events like the sequence changes reported here, occur by a process intrinsic to the plant. As before, we propose the possibility that Arabidopsis plants harbor a cryptic store of sequence templates that can overwrite the parentally contributed genomes by a template-directed mechanism. If intrinsic drivers of genetic variation exist in inbreeding plant species, have additional incidents of cryptic genetic variation been documented in other systems? We believe that in soybean and cauliflower, such events have indeed been reported and presented as cases of enigmatic phenotypic variation. In other studies, molecular data have been featured. Again, in flax, for example, molecular assays have demonstrated that heritable phenotypic changes induced by environmental shifts are accompanied by reproducible locus-specific copy number changes in genomic, genomic DNA. Genomic changes manifesting similar hall hallmarks of bias, biased sequence alterations have also been described in rice and corn hybrids as well as in Arabidopsis. The writers are just referring you to all these other studies where uh, the genetic mutations are not random. They are targeted in specific uh, DNA sequences. I mean, if areas of the genome are being targeted by mutations, uh, then that, that's, that's a huge obstacle to this concept that, you know, it's just taking away so much more potential uh, mutations that natural selection can uh, work on if that makes sense. If you picture uh, the whole genome and to create like a very complex, uh, you know, to really drastically alter uh, morphology and uh, anatomy and create like, you know, complex organs, that's going to require many uh, DNA variations all over the genome to produce that. So if current research is finding that only uh, specific regions of the genome are targeted, you know, doing, due to stressful environments, uh, that just that kind of that throws a wrench in this whole idea. So, and that, at the end of this paper, in conclusions, uh, it reads, in addition to models demonstrating the fitness benefits of module level selection, computational models provide surprisingly strong support for an ancestrally based error correcting mechanism such as the one we propose to exist in 
Arabidopsis plants. In these constrained optimization simulations, the evolutionary benefit of genetic repair strategies was compared between populations that access repair templates derived from either parents, grandparents, or great-grandparents. Yeah, I mean, look at it objectively. What, what this is really saying is species have a, an error-correcting ability uh, they're designed to be able to uh, adapt to certain stresses. It's not, it's not random. They're not like they're not accidentally stumbling into these, you know, serendipitous uh, variations that are selected for. Uh, it's the other way around. The stress of the environment is directly uh, producing these variations. Uh, in a completely in a non-random way. So in that paper on the Arab, Arabidopsis plants they referred to a study on flax and I'm going to read a little bit from this paper. It's titled An Environmentally Induced Adaptive Insertion Event in Flax by Yiming Chen et al. And this was published in April 2009. Genomic changes in flax induced by the environment include the sequences encoding the ribosomal RNAs, many repetitive sequence families, and a novel single copy insertion termed LIS1, comprising a 5.7 kilobase DNA fragment. The results show that the environment can act as both the inducer of targeted genetic variation and as the selective agent for advantageous mutations. Uh, so basically that's just talking about uh, the insertion of a LIS1 gene that is uh, targeted and induced by environment stre environmental stress. So a little from the introduction. Mutation is the central player in the Darwinian theory of evolution. It is the ultimate source of heritable variation, providing the necessary raw material for natural selection. In general, mutation is assumed to create heritable variation that is random and undirected. Natural selection then discriminates among the initial variants by sorting them according to their adaptive values. Genome structure has been shown to be dynamic and responsive to conditions of stress resulting in mutations that can arise at widely varying frequencies. This genomic response does not assume that the mutations induced by any particular challenge are more likely to directly address that challenge simply that the sites at which these mutations occur is not randomly distributed through the genome. Accumulating evidence for such non-randomness of change includes several documented instances where parts of the genome apparently alter in direct response to the environment, be it, with, be it the external growth environment or the internal genomic environment. In each case, DNA variations arise in an apparent direct response to an environmental or genomic cue. However, the variations have gener generally not been shown to be directed to generate specific adaptive changes, with the possible exception of pathogen-induced DNA rearrangements. The most striking of all the current examples of genomic reorganization in response to stress is the induction of heritable changes in flax. Flax undergoes heritable changes in phenotype and genotype in response to the growth environment. The role of the environment in generating adaptive mutations is still a contentious subject. Some of the instances of adaptive mutation involve either an increase in mutation rate or gene amplification. The high frequency programmed rearrangements in the macronuclei of ciliates in the immune system that do occur in a reproducible fashion are excluded from the germline, so do not directly affect the genotype of the next generation. 
the results reported here show that in flax, a reproducible insertion event can occur in direct response to the growth environment and this event may be directly selectable. Uh, the results reported here demonstrate that the environment can act both as an inducer of variation within a limited subset of the genome and then as the subsequent selective agent among the variants generated to genetically alter the majority or all of a population as has been previously proposed. The results have clear evolutionary implications for any organism in which the germline is not set aside very early in development as the, this mechanism can give rise to a selectable coordinated set of mutations under particular environmental stresses that can result sizable rapid adaptive evolutionary responses. Uh, I mean the reason evolutionists believe that these mutations are random is because that conforms to their the philosophy of evolution where they they don't see anything happening in a species as uh, as having been directed or designed or put there with a purpose so when they see mutations happening uh, and they gave it that name mutation to you know make it sound like an error basically but you know I'll just use it when they see mutations happening they just assume yeah these are just totally random errors that occur because basically biology is just a system that works good enough and there's all sorts of blind reaching around in the dark and stumbling over changes and you know it's the same mantra all right and uh, here's here's a couple more studies relating to uh, non-random mutations or targeted mutations. Uh, this one is dated December 2012 by Anigo Martin Carina et al. And it's titled Non-Random Mutation, The Evolution of Targeted Hypermutation and Hypomutation. A widely accepted tenet of evolutionary biology is that spontaneous mutations occur randomly with regard to their fitness effect. However, since the mutation rate varies along the genome, and this variation can be subject to selection, organisms might evolve lower mutation rates at loci where mutations are most deleterious or increased rates where mutations are most needed. In fact, mechanisms of targeted hypermutation are known in organisms ranging from bacteria to humans. Here's a, another paper. This was written in, published in January 2013 by uh, Zoe Migikowski et al. And it's titled, Changes to DNA Methylation and Homologous Recombination frequency in the progeny of stressed plants. Uh, plants undergo changes in response to biotic and abiotic stresses that help them adjust and survive. Some of these changes may even be passed on to progeny and eventually lead to adaptive evolution. Transgenerational changes in response to stress include alterations in DNA methylation and changes in homologous recombination frequency or HRF. The progeny of plants that were stressed often show elevated HRF as well as genomic hypermethylation although specific loci that are beneficial in times of stress may be hypomethylated. One of the possible mechanisms responsible for passing the memory to the progeny involves small interfering RNAs, dicer-like proteins, DCL2 and DCL3 are in part required for this process. However, while epigenetic modifications are often present in the untreated progeny of stressed plants, they are not usually sustained for multiple unexposed generations. Still, transgenerational, transgenerational inheritance of such changes has already begun to provide evidence for an important role of epigenetics in enhancing stress resistance.